Hi guys, this is, I'm Cheryl with uh, First Weber and I'm excited to be doing my first uh, business video of the year, my local business highlight. And I'm even more excited because I'm joined here with Rebecca from The Great Little Bakery. And she is based out of Mount Horeb and she does um, baking out of her kitchen and she's gonna share her story with us. She has a website that I will share when we share this video and an extensive menu of options. And we will also hear about her share boxes and um, some of the things that she does and what got her started in this great adventure. So Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me. Um, tell us, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got started. Hi. <laughs> um... Well, I am a home bakery, so I make all kinds of different things, um, pies and cakes and breads and scones and muffins and other kinds of pastry. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really know. It's kind of, I sort of feel like it's a whirlwind of how it started. Um, I used to be a voice teacher. I mean, I still am a voice teacher. I will always be a voice teacher, <laughs> but because of COVID, I haven't been able to teach at home safely. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I just needed another source of income and just also another way to connect with people because I really love people and that's why I love teaching so much. Teaching voice is like such a great, yes, I just love it. So, and I just, I was like, what else can I do that I can help people in our community during this rough time? And the only other thing besides, yeah, is baking. So I just decided to try and I, I thought at first I would just have a pie company or something and you know, through friends encouraging me to just do other things. I've just kind of branched out with all the different things that I offer. So it's been really fun. And Rebecca, it's not only when they get to see a little tour of your kitchen and the goodies you have right there now, <laughs> um, it, they are amazing. And you were telling me how, you know, you did a lot of cooking with your mother and your grandmother and that this has mm -hmm. really kind of been a family affair that you've passed down. And I just, I think that's so special because you know, you're sharing a gift with, like you said, the community and people that, you know, is a little bit lost right now. Not a lot of people take the time to make all of those amazing home goods. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about the share box. How does that work? Oh, yeah. Well, because I'm a home bakery, um, it doesn't, it's not cost effective to do like, oh, two muffins for someone. And so I got <laughs> a lot of, for the first couple months, you know, the smallest bat, like you have to order six cinnamon rolls when you order cinnamon rolls for mm -hmm. me, um, or six muffins or six scones or whatever, a whole loaf of bread. Um, and I just kept getting messages saying, can I please have two muffins of this flavor and two scones? And I have to be like, I can't just bake, <laughs> you know, it just isn't cost effective. I wish that I was a bakery and you could come and just pick out whatever you want. But then I was like, wait a second, what if I just planned it all on one day and that way people can try different varieties um, for the same amount of effort for me. So how it works is on Sunday night or Monday morning, I post on social media, like Instagram and Facebook, what is going to be in the share box. So it's six items. Usually sometimes around the holidays, I did it a little larger, but two of each. So like last week's was two blueberry muffins, two everything bagels and two garlic Parmesan swirls, which are kind of like a savory cinnamon roll. Yum. And then um, everybody gets to try all three of those varieties, um, but not have to order six of each. It's been kind of a win. So people, it's only, I just started putting it on the website, which is confusing to people. I used to just do it through social media, but you have to place your order before Tuesday noon okay. and then pick up is on Wednesday. And okay. it's been really awesome, really successful. So, and if people keep their eye on your Facebook page every now and then you'll post something like, I have two extra cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Yep. Yes. When my kids don't talk me into letting them eat them, they're sometimes are extra. I was just, <laughs> just going to say, because you do have, um, you know, a fair amount of children in your house and how mm -hmm. you keep those from not disappearing, I think is really important. <laughs> At my house, if I had to sell six muffins, there might be five left. before. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually, I have been really strict with the kids not being in the kitchen because of COVID. Like if anyone's in the kitchen while I'm cooking, you have to have a mask on. So that has helped actually a little bit. Yeah. We're not always right there. So and people yeah. will notice that we're not together this time because it is impressive how serious you take COVID and you know how you said you are sanitizing everything when we did the little tour of the kitchen a minute ago. You put your mask on. You said you make a point to wear your mask when you're cooking. And all yeah. of that 
is so appreciated because I know everybody is being so cautious right now and you're clearly really taking it to heart and doing everything you can to make sure yeah. everything's safe. I just want everybody to be okay. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be the reason that somebody else, you know, gets yeah. it or whatever. So, well, show us some of your goodies that you have there. That journey okay. you take is amazing. Okay. So this is my little kitchen. It actually is quite little for seven people and a bakery, but I won't complain. <laughs> about that. Let me just grab my mask, actually. Hold on one second. You're just fine. Okay. I'm actually in the middle of making a German chocolate cake. So it needs some buttercream yet. It looks so pretty though. Is that all coconut on top? Yeah, it's coconut pecan caramel frosting. Yum. And then I had some orders for some caramel apple cinnamon rolls today. Yeah, one of those is mine. So I will take the one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> those actually are the one thing that my husband, those are my husband's favorite. So he are they? loves those. Yeah. And then I also made some turnovers. I don't know. I can't really see the camera. Yes. I see them. I see them. You make a few different flavors of turnovers. I do. Apple, cherry, and blueberry. And it's all homemade puff pastry. I like make it from scratch. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was a new thing I had to learn when I started the bakery. I was determined to figure that out. So. And you said yeah. you do a lot of like local sourcing of produce and of flour and stuff like that. Yeah, I actually really believe in like organic, like local food, mm -hmm. whole food, like we eat whole foods in our family. Um, and that's actually another reason that I thought my bakery, I think my bakery is successful is that people want to buy responsibly. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I use all organic family, organic butter and milk, and I use Great River milling company organic flour they're oh. a local wisconsin company and then actually some of the fruit that's in things actually comes from my own backyard like the peaches and my peach pie really we had so many peaches this summer i froze i think 20 gallons of peaches wow that's so yeah. cool you live right in town so to have peaches right in town like that that's really fun yeah. the raspberries too are from my garden i have Gallons and gallons of raspberries in my freezer from the garden, <laughs> so. Which gives people a little taste of summer in the middle of winter. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's awesome. We were talking a little bit about gluten-free and I just wanted to touch on that because I am really impressed that your menu does offer some gluten-free items. Yeah. Uh, but we also are really cognizant of the fact that it may not work for people that have a, a severe allergy or celiac. If yeah. you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I actually have a good friend who has celiac. And so I, I'm aware of what would need to happen for everything to be safe. Um, and I do use some of those protocols, but, you know, I also bake with wheat in my kitchen. Right. So, um, you know, for example, I only use stainless steel equipment um, and I always make sure that it's been sanitized in the dishwasher before I bake stuff gluten-free. Yeah. And I always make sure I do the gluten stuff first in the day so that I am, I, so I'm really careful, but you know, with celiac, it just right. takes one tiny amount. So for people who have gluten intolerance or are trying to um, do an elimination diet, it is, you know, it's safe, but you know, yeah. if you have a really bad allergy, you yeah, really- it sounds like you're doing everything you can given the space you have and the yeah. amount of things that you're baking on a given day. And that in itself is really impressive, but it's also really helpful for people to understand like, you know, how far it goes so they can make yeah. their own decision. Yeah, it's not a gluten-free kitchen, so. Right, right. Yeah. There's a chance of cross-contamination, but you do have the offering for people that, that might need it. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. And how much notice do you typically need when somebody places an order? Uh, we talked about the share box, but in general, like if, if somebody is going to say, hey, I would really like to order, you know, 12 muffins or 12 cinnamon rolls, how much notice do you typically need? Um, well, I actually just changed it on the website um, to just a 24-hour notice. Okay. I'm not sure that I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> kind of experimenting. I, one of the things that as a growing business, I'm just trying to learn, you know, what works best for customers and for my family and myself too. Right. As of right now, it's 24 hours, okay. but there are days that I just get too many orders that I have to end up, you know, even if someone places an order on the website, I've had to call and say, I'm so sorry. I'm already booked for that day. Right. I try to stay on top of it and like cross that day off on the website, but 
I'm a one woman show over here. So, <laughs> well, we were talking about that. There's not a great way to automate that. So it's yeah. tough because you have to, like you said, stay on top of it. I also wanted to note that um, you have beautiful birthday cakes. You showed us the, um, you know, German chocolate cake, but you also have beautiful decorated birthday cakes as well. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my mom was one of those crazy ladies who made like all the amazing, like she made maybe Barbie doll cakes in the 80s. Do you guys remember those oh, yeah. <laughs> with the dresses? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it'd be like a doll and then the dress was the cake. Yeah. Um, and she also like, my mom made all these amazing cakes when I was a kid. So that's where I learned how to do all that was from her. And I never thought I would do cakes. There's a lot of people in town that do them. So I didn't think it was a need, but it's kind of fun. And so- yeah. Yeah, I do. I especially love to do painted cakes. I don't know if you've seen one of those before, but okay. they're, just, they're not, they don't use a piping bag. They just use a clean palette knife. Like you would paint oh. um, an oil painting with. I actually went to art school and, and I'm a painter too. So oh. when I saw that you could paint cake, I was like, what? <laughs> so, I mean, you just are using colored um, buttercream. Okay. Um, but it's really, really fun. You'll have to check my website and look at the pictures of those because they're kind yeah. of neat. One of them I saw that was really cool was the chocolate one. With the trees? Yeah. They, yeah. You have to check out her website, but it's like, I, I don't know. Did you drizzle it and then let it dry and then use it as a... Yeah, I just did some chocolate. You know, I tempered the chocolate and made trees on a parchment and then put them on the side of a cake because it's a black forest cake. So the trees, you know. Right. It was so <laughs> cool. And it's three-dimensional. I'd be afraid to drive it home, but... Um... <laughs> But it would, you know, it was just really neat the way that it was all around the side of the cake and it made it like, a, like you said, a black forest. It was really cool. Yeah, that's my favorite part is just making stuff look really nice too. I think it's, you know, you kind of eat with your eyes. So yeah, no, awesome. And I mean, it's got to take you a lot of time to put together, you know, six beautiful cinnamon rolls or six muffins, the way you have them wrapped and everything else. Yeah, it does kind of, but it's also, I, I just enjoy it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing I was going to mention that I thought was so cool that you talked about was that uh, your son, your teenage son is sometimes your sous chef and comes in and helps you. So I think that's really special too, that you tell him, you know, Hey, get your apron. We've got a big yeah. order. <laughs> and Actually, all of my kids would help if I let them, but he is the one that has the most training. So he, <laughs> coming home. <laughs> you know. um, is there a chance, Rebecca, that the rest of your kids are taste testers? Well, yeah. I mean, of course. <laughs> I just, I try new things all the time and I'm like, hey, try this. But I mean, most of the kids are like, oh, that's so good. Cause they just don't, you know what I mean? They don't it's have a the treat. Palette. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that there's about what, you know, 9,000 people in the community that would be more than happy to be <laughs> I do have a couple of friends that I will bring stuff to and be like, here, taste this for me and tell me. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me. I'm going to be uh, picking up my cinema. Yeah, it was so nice to meet you. Yeah, in just a little bit here. And I'm excited for my boys to have some. But, you know, one of the things I was talking to Rebecca about before we got on the recording was that you know, in a time where there's so much going on, it's great to find ways to share some happiness and share some joy. And that's why I still have my Christmas tree up is because I want to, you know, hang on to the Christmas joy as long as I can. But what a great way to, you know, support your team or support, you know, people that you work with or people, you know, in church or people that are shut in to do a little pop by and drop them off, you know, a baked good or a muffin or, you know, whatever. And so that's one of the things that I really love knowing that it's local, um, it's quality ingredients. It's very, very well cared for as far as safety concerns are for COVID and germs and everything else. And, um, just a great way to brighten somebody's day. So thank you so much for doing what you do, Rebecca, and I will be sharing your website so we can keep an eye on all that is great to come. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. You too, Cheryl. It's so nice spending time with you. Nice talking to you too.